Hi, I'm Leisha. I teach digitizing classes at My Girlfriend's Quilt Shop in Logan, Utah. For more information about the classes you can take, see the link in the description below. This is the first video in a series of videos on how to digitize using Palette Embroidery 11, or PE11. If you have an older version of the software, feel free to follow along, as most of the tools are the same. If you have any questions, be sure to ask them in the comment section down below. Subscribe to my channel to follow along as I post more lessons. The first thing you see when you open the program is the startup wizard, so I thought this was the best place to start. Let's start with the Open Instruction Manual button. This opens up an internet browser with the instruction manual. First, you'll see a page recommending which browsers to use. Once you hit OK, it will take you to the manual. I know what you are probably thinking, that you would rather have a physical copy, but this is actually very simple and fast to use. You will notice on the left-hand side of the screen that the manual is divided into different sections. By clicking on the section, you get a drop-down menu of all the topics within the section and even sections within those sections. From here, you can find whatever topic you are looking for. If you are not sure where to look for your specific question, there is also a search feature on the top right-hand side of the screen. Simply type in what you are wanting information on, for example, appliques, and it will bring up all the areas in the manual that applique is mentioned, and you can select from there the information you are looking for. There is an easy to find index button next to the search bar, which brings up an alphabetical list of everything in the manual. You will also notice a print button. This actually allows you to select specific sections that you would like to print, or you can print all of it at once. If you do choose to do this, I recommend going to a print shop because this is not a small manual. The startup wizard is not the only place that gets you to the instruction manual. The fastest way to get to the manual is by using a shortcut key, F1. I highly recommend you get used to using shortcut keys because they are a huge time saver while digitizing. I have a link to a shortcut key cheat sheet in the description down below. Another place you can find the instruction manual is in the quick access toolbar. This is a toolbar that can be customized to the tools you most frequently use and is located below the ribbon of tools. The instruction manual is the preset tool here but you can choose to keep or delete any of these preset tools. I will show you how to do this in a later video. The last place to find the instruction manual is in the help dropdown on the top right hand corner of your screen. Here you can also check for updates for your program, contact customer support, or register your program. While we are here, I suggest you do check for updates to the program. If there is an update available, be sure to run it. If your program is up to date, you will see this pop up. Be sure to check the box that says automatically check for updates at startup. That way, you will never miss one. There are several ways to get back to the startup wizard. You can use the shortcut key F3, this button on the quick access toolbar, or you can click on the flower button on the top right hand side of the screen. This button is equivalent to the file button you might find in other programs. The wizard option is the second from the bottom. Let's take a look at the right hand side of the wizard. The larger section shows the designs you most recently edited. This is very handy when you take a break from a project, as now you don't have to go searching through folders to find what you are looking for. Just below that is the Open Embroidery Design button, which works just like a file explorer on your computer and can be used to search different folders for the design you are looking for. The bottom right hand button opens the Palette Embroidery Design database. This is a very cool database that when you have set up correctly will allow you to use keywords to search for specific designs that you are looking for. Using this database takes a lot of setup and time, so I will go into more detail about this in another video. Back to the left hand side of the startup wizard you will see the use template design button. When you start up this feature you will notice that your main window closes. Don't worry, this is normal. The software will pop up with a window where you can choose from several different templates that come with the program. The designs are separated into different categories that you can look through by clicking on the drop down menu. For today, I'm going to go to the apron section and I'm going to choose this chef design. You can either double click or select the design and press next. Now you will see a new window. On the left is a preview of the design you are looking for. On the right, you will see the details of the design, including the name of the design, the stitch count, the size of the design, the number of color changes, and the total number of colors used. Just below the design information, you will see some text fields. Some designs have more changeable areas than others. This design only has one. I can use these text fields to change the wording on the template. You can either click on the field, then click on the edit text button, or you can double click. 
My son is just at the age where he loves to help us cook, so I'm going to use this template to make him an apron. I'm going to change the text to Future Chef and press Enter on the keyboard. On the left, you can see that the design has changed to show the new text. Once you are satisfied with the changes, go ahead and click Next. Here, you can save the design onto a flash drive, or if you have a USB cable that connects to your embroidery machine, you can send the design right to your machine. Your flash drive or your machine must be plugged into your computer to show on this list, unless you have a Bluetooth or wireless machine like a BabyLock Destiny. You can also choose to open your project in the design page, which will allow you to make further edits in the palette program. We will go in more depth on using and creating templates in a later video. Just below the template button in the wizard is Create Design Using Image. This takes you to the auto punch feature, which I am going to go over in a later video, so we will skip this for now. Below is the Fabric and Hoop Selector button. This pops up with a window that allows you to choose what hoop size you are working with. Once again, you will see a preview window on the left. On the right, you can choose between a single needle or a multi needle machine. I normally digitize in multi needle, partly because I own a multi needle machine, but also because there are some extra features that are only available in this setting. We will talk more about this later. Below the machine options is a drop down menu for the hoop sizes. Your program may be showing the hoop sizes in millimeters or inches. You can easily change the measuring system in use in the program, but let's not get into that right now. Just know that if you are from the US, like me, it's very important that you start to train yourself to think in millimeters as well as inches. This is because millimeters are much more precise than inches are. And because of this, the measuring system your machine is more compatible with is millimeters. Here is a quick conversion chart with common hoop sizes. This conversion chart is included with the shortcut key cheat sheet linked below. Below the hoop size drop down is an option for custom sizes. This is used if you would like to make a multi hooping design. This comes in handy for those times when you would like to make a very large design, but you don't have a hoop that is large enough. You can type in how big you want your sewing fields to be, then select the hoop size you actually have, and the program will automatically calculate where the different hoopings would go. Notice the red lines in the preview section where these smaller hoopings are. You can also choose a larger or smaller hoop overlap with this checkbox. Below the custom hoop size options, you can choose the color of the page and background. The page represents the fabric you are stitching on. If you know you are putting this design on black fabric, you can change the page color to black so you can get a better idea of what the design will look like when it is stitched out. The background is the area outside the stitch area. It is a good idea to have this set as a contrasting color so that you know exactly where the stitch area ends. You can set these back to their original settings by clicking the default button. Notice that this changed the hoop size back to 4 by 4 inches or 100 by 100 millimeters. Let's just keep it there. On the output tab on the top, you can change even more settings. This option determines how the program interprets the sewing field. I always have mine set to existing design area, which allows me to move things outside of the hoop area while I am playing with the design. You will get a notification when you save the design if it is outside of the stitching area as a reminder if you forgot to move the objects back in. Below, you have a setting for multi-hooping. This will optimize the number of hoopings the design needs. The bottom is a setting that is only available when you have the multi-needle machine selected. This setting determines how wide your jump stitches need to be before the design will register that a thread needs to be cut. Right now, mine is set to 2 millimeters. This means that if two objects of the same color are within 2 millimeters, the thread will not cut, but instead jump right to the next object. Once you choose your hoop size and other settings, you will continue to an area where you can choose the type of fabric you are working with. I typically choose default because I never know what people will decide to stitch my designs on. But if you are making a design for a specific project and know what the design is going on, feel free to select the correct fabric type. For example, choose terry cloth for towels. By choosing a different fabric type, you are changing the density and other stitch settings in the program to be optimized for the type of fabric you're using. The program also gives you suggestions on stabilizers and toppings for that kind of fabric, which is pretty handy. Now all your settings are in place and you can begin to digitize. If you ever need to go back and change the hoop size, you can use this little hoop button on the quick access toolbar, or you can use the flower to get back to it. Notice that the fabric selector is not on the quick access toolbar and can only be found in the file menu. 
Now back to the startup wizard. The last three buttons, located under the import embroidery design section, all pretty much do the same thing. So I'm going to choose one to focus on. Let's do the flower. This will open up the import stalker on the right hand side of the program. This is where you will find all the embroidery designs that come with the program. If you click on the From dropdown, you will see the Text and Shapes sections that were also located on the wizard. A few more honorable mentions in this dropdown are the Templates, which draws from the same ones we looked at earlier, and Folder, which allows you to search your own designs located on your computer. Below the From dropdown is a list of categories you can choose from to help you find what you are looking for. Once you decide on a design you want to use, you can either select it, then select the Import button, or you can double click it and it will open in the design window. You can open multiple designs at once. There is one last thing I would like to talk to you about in the startup wizard. If you are like me and you're not very fond of having pop-ups when you start a program, you can uncheck the option to have the wizard open at startup. This is simply a personal preference and if you like having the wizard pop up so you have all of these tools right on hand, feel free to leave this checked. Here are some pictures of the apron I made using the template that we edited. This is everything I have for you today. Remember to let me know in the comment section if you have any questions, like this video if you found it helpful, and be sure to subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell if you want to keep up with my videos. Thanks, see you next time!